My name is Birgitta Jónsdóttir, I'm a member of parliament in Iceland and I co-produced the Collateral Murder video and I was a spokesperson for a while for Wikileaks uh, and uh, I have finally come to the United States and I was allowed to come which is very pleasing uh, and I'm primarily here to raise awareness about Bradley Manning and uh, the video that I helped co-produce uh, because I feel that not enough uh, people in the United States have seen it uh, and if they haven't seen it in a year they need to see it again because the Bradley Manning trials are starting on the 3rd of June and that's when we all need to join hands to raise awareness about his situation. So tell people out there more of your background, how did you get involved in, uh, especially in Iceland, in your area, like what was your turning point for getting involved and finding out about Bradley Manning? What was that one thing that made you get involved and spread a message around? Well, I've been an activist ever since I can remember. I think my first direct action was when I was 14. Uh, and um, I really tried to stop the Iraq war from happening with millions of people from around the world. Uh, and uh, when we had the financial crisis in Iceland, uh, I did the unthinkable. I helped create the political party uh, because I really felt that we needed people to go inside to try to understand how it works and to open the doors for the general public so that they can participate and I wanted to create the legal tools uh, for uh, uh, more direct democracy uh, and I, you know, I just happened to meet Julian Assange and Daniel domscheit uh very early on as an MP um, in 2009 uh, and um, I started to work with them on a project in making Iceland into a transparency haven, like uh, where we have the best possible laws uh, for freedom of information, expression and speech uh, in the 21st century. So what has the response been um, for the general public out there in your area? It seems like the media here is not getting a lot of coverage on what's going on over there. Uh, could you tell more people about that for those who don't know what's going on there right now? Yeah, I mean, uh, we had the third largest financial collapse in the history of the world because of very similar um, stuff as are happening here. Uh, the perfect marriage between the corporate and the state. And, you know, too big to fail was, of course, the first thing we heard. We were fortunate enough nobody wanted to lend us money so we couldn't bail out the banks. Uh, so we've had, uh, since the collapse, more direct democracy than ever before in our history. We're a relatively young democracy in the sense that we... Uh, were occupied or by the Danish until 1944. Uh, so we've had national referendums on if we should uh, bail out the banksters and we said no. Uh, it was a huge risk and, and Iceland was taken to a European court if we had done uh, uh, something not according to e e European law. And uh, we won just recently, uh, so it proved that it was worth taking the risk because if we would have lost, it would have meant that all nations are responsible for uh, private debt, which is crazy. Uh, and we've also had um, uh, a really beautiful project going on, which I am exceptionally proud to have been able to facilitate. Unfortunately, it's been stopped on its track right now, uh, but we one of the demands during the revolution in Iceland was um, we wanted to rewrite our constitution by and for the people of Iceland. It is a constitution is really a social agreement on what sort of society you want to live in. And uh, it's important that each generation actually has an opportunity to rethink uh, and reevaluate and affirm, uh, make it affirmative if they want to carry on in that society their ancestors built. And uh, so we did that and was actually crowdsourced and uh, it was a beautiful constitution so um, much in the spirit of the society I want to live in. Of course it wasn't just as radical as I would have liked it to be, but no one person will have the perfect constitution. Uh, but if you <coughs> uh, allow for to be in the constitution uh, tools for the general public to be able to put forward bills and call for national referendums, we're on the right track. And we had all these things uh, built in it. And uh, for example, that uh, uh, accessibility to the internet is uh, a constitutional right. And uh, in the last days of the parliament, just a few days ago, um, uh, the old powers blocked it and stopped it. So we didn't get to vote on it, uh, even if the nation had voted that they wanted it. So um, uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, but uh, we'll need massive campaigning to get it back on track.
So for just to wrap it up here quick, tell us where the viewers out there, where people could find your work or your good work, your website, and anything you want to share for people out there, for people to get involved in and uh, contribute something. Right, so uh, you can go to immi.is, which is uh, a website for the Icelandic Modern Media Initiative uh, and the International Modern Media uh, Institute. Uh, and if they want to see what I'm up to, they can go to... Uh, I'm the chairperson for the uh, IMI. But uh, to the more personal side of me, they can go to B-I-R-G-I-T-T-A. Uh, .is and there are links to all my different sites, my blog, Twitter, Facebook and my my very ancient web page because I was the first uh, Icelandic woman to develop web pages in 95. So I'm a long-term geek. <laughs> well, thank you very much. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Bradley Manning's story. He was the young soldier who released the uh, security tapes to WikiLeaks, which Julian Assange published. But he also released videotape of war crimes by American soldiers in Iraq. Anyone uh, disagrees with the government or, or any powerful entity, they usually get smeared. Their motives are pathologized, psychologized, and, and always marginalized. And we see this in Bradley Manning. So much of the mainstream press coverage 